I almost feel like this is starting to become a running gag. What's up, everyone? Yeah. This is a destroyer, two two nine, and welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda: Twilight Princess HD. Last time, we made our way through the Gerudo Desert, managed to find the missing piece of the Bridge of Elden, and discovered the Cave of Ordeals. Which, yes, I did look that up and made fun of myself a lot of. In this episode, we still have not reached our destination yet, though we are pretty close. It's within reach, but unfortunately, the Boko Bins have established a base of operations here at the prison. So it's going to be our job to try and break through. Whoa, what the? Whoa, what the? I did not mean to actually fire a stupid arrow. Also, how did I get turned around? No wonder I was confused. There we go. So our main objective is to take out these guards that are, well, blocking our path. I would not, however, mind some more arrows. That would be great. Five rupees, oh boy. I mean, granted, we do need money, and we do have plenty of room for money, but it's not something I immediately need right now. Damn it. I need some arrows. That would actually be really great. Uh, oh, hold up. Hello there. And goodbye. Headshot. Fortunately, now I'm down to my last arrow. Ah, uh, what the? Hmm. You can actually move this these boxes I wonder let's see would it at all be possible fortunately I can no longer see the stupid thing oh wait got him and now I'm out of arrows so a lot of this is does boil down to a bit of stealth. Oh, thank goodness, I needed these. If the Bokobin see you, then they will immediately try to rush you and, well, everyone in the immediate vicinity. Our goal is to try to get through here, and if we can do it stealthily and without, well, getting a lot of attention to ourselves, oh. That would be preferable. Let's see. He's sleepy. Got him! It's not strictly necessary to do this stealthily, but it does help. Let's see. And there's some more up there. Let's see. I saw one on the ground over here. Got him. And then the watch. Where's the one? There's the one in the watchtower. Get rid of him. Especially the ones in the watchtower. They will let their comrades know that you are right there. And you will be ambushed. So getting through this as quietly as possible would be beneficial. I say this and then something is... Someone decided to lawn their mo mow their lawn right outside my house. So I'm not sure if that's actually going to be picked up. I don't know. I've heard there is also an area that you can go through over there. We can't actually reach it yet. Let's see. And gotcha! Best to take them all out from a distance to avoid any unwanted attention. 
there any other ones nearby that I can shoot? Yes, there is! Can I get him from here? Boom! Right between the eyes! Okay! Hawk I'm getting a lot of use out of the Hawkeye. A lot more than I ever thought I would. Let's see. Anything else nearby? Well, there's some stuff. Money. Nothing. Uh, ee. You stay there. And then you die. Okay. So, so far, so good. We haven't... They don't really know that we're here, actually. It helps that we're infiltrating this at night. I'm not sure if they would actually be really, t like, sleepy otherwise. So he's gone. Uh, we already got rid of the one over here. Now, ultimately, we do want to bust through that barricade. But we can only do that once we have those Warthog-type mounds. Oh, hello. You have something shiny. And down he goes. And he dropped the key. Any others nearby? No? Are we good? I think we're good. Uh, I don't know why I can target that. But we get a key. Wow, I actually can't believe we managed to get through this without being detected. It's actually kind of impressive, to be honest. Whatever. Mini chest here. Mini chest has 50 rupees. Oh, man. So, yeah. Again, not strictly necessary to get through it incredibly stealthily. But it does help prevent a bunch of reinforcements from showing up. However, now that we have a key, we can enter through this gate and press on through where there's one of the mounds. Uh-oh. I do not like where this is going at all. Now we have another fight with King Bokobin. As long as yep. As long as we can keep on slicing him using as many techniques as possible, especially the helm splitter. The helm splitter works exceptionally well. Oh, he's he's winded. Ah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, what the? How did I miss that? There we go. Whatever. Not that hard of a fight, especially with the Helm Splitter. That works wonders. Oh, he's still up. I think he broke an arm. Um... Screw you guys, I'm going home. Ow. Ow! Oh! He's a sore loser! Also, how are just stones getting burned? Oh, well, whatever. We don't have time to dilly-dally. Get on top of this thing. And break on through! And we made it. We broke through the Boko Bin's lair, and we have made it to the dungeon. Let's see. I don't really see much of worth anything down here. Ow. There is a Poe, though. And actually, this will be our 20th Poe. 
Which means once we get back to Hyrule, we can talk to Giovanni. And we can get a nice reward from him. Sweet. You collected 20 Poe Souls. So we are getting... Oh, hello. I, I kind of lost my train of thought. Because there are lantern... Well, there's torch stands that we can use our lantern on to reveal a chest. Which probably has money. Called it. That was way too easy to notice that <laughs> it wouldn't be anything else but money. Okay, I don't believe there's anything else. No, not that I see. Alright, well. It's time we enter this prison. And try to find this mirror. So we go on through, and we enter. The Arbiter's Grounds. Arbiter's Grounds is essentially our desert temple. Really more just the desert dungeon as opposed to just calling it a temple. There's one good thing that Twilight Princess does is that the different dungeons all revolve around something besides just a dungeon or a temple. That is not what I want to do. Which is very interesting. Oh, no you don't. So yeah, we're gonna want a claw shot to take out those stupid sand things. Now, unlike in the regular desert, we actually, oh shoot, we actually don't want to stay on that sand for long. Because it's essentially quicksand. So it's, if we're not careful and if we're on there for too long, not only does Link just slow down, but eventually he'll just fall right on through, and then, yeah, And then he will just act as though he fell into a pit. Unfortunately, I can't roll. Climb on it, climb! There we go. Darn it, why do I keep doing that? I need to, okay. The bow is not going to be immediately helpful right here, so I'm going to move the claw over there, move the bow right there, and yeah, I can have the gale boomerang there. Now thankfully, you can roll across very- oh, hello. You can roll across very easily. Nope, 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 nope. Unfortunately... Not only are there enemies there, but there's also more sand. I don't believe this will work. Now, does Claw work on this? Yes, actually. Uh oh. Okay. So what we want to do with this is bring the claw shot out far enough and then pull it out ourselves. So yeah, very nice having the claw shot here. Now, let's see. We need to get a key to get through there. Now thankfully, this is actually a pretty helpful basin. Because, it allows us to refill our lantern. We are going to want to use the lantern a fair amount in this dungeon. Alright. Get on through. Claim the chest. And in the chest, we have a key. It may not be a bad idea to fill up on lantern oil. Yeah. Okay. 
Right, sorry about that. Now these bugs are very much... This is why we want the lantern, because those bugs are going to be incredibly annoying, and they will swarm up and will consume you if you are not careful. Let's go ahead and just refill our lantern, because trust me, we're going to want as much lantern oil as we can get. I'm probably being a little bit paranoid, but hey. And this next room, you especially want to have a full lantern. Because it's dark. So yeah. Not only are there plenty of enemies just scattered about, and will also try to, well, go after you. There are also going to be instances where we'll find more of those scarabs. Thankfully, the spin attack takes out these guys very easily. Also, we're going to want the lantern to make sure that we don't accidentally fall into a pit. Go out. So yeah. We really, really want to use the lantern. Uh oh. There we go. Opens that up, and now we can actually put away our lantern. For now. So we enter through the door, and we find the central room. going to be our main mechanic. Four Poes have stolen the light that we need in order to... Oh, shoot. Missed my chance. Yeah. Got it! Four Poes have stolen the light needed to open the door. So we need to take them out in order to actually return the light. And of course, gotta steal their souls. Thankfully, these do count. So these are actually required hoes that we have to kill for Giovanni's quest. We already have 20, but it doesn't hurt to get more. Each Poe defeated, we return another light to these pedestals. And also, there seems to be something coming off from this one. A new scent. We've learned the Poe scent. So now we can go and chase after the Poes that have stolen each of the lights. This is starting to feel s sort of familiar. You know, minus the whole scent thing. Yeah, remember when I said that Twilight Princess took some cues from Ocarina of Time when we were in the Sacred Grove? Yeah, they basically just reused the Forest Temple's main mechanic for the Arbiter's Grounds. And added, well, Wolf Link to it as well. So, yeah, da, 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 da. so yeah, that is essentially the concept for this dungeon. But don't think that just because they reuse the post stealing the light mechanic. Oh damn, I forgot this is where a piece of heart was. Just because they reuse the, that mechanic, don't assume that they just this is just a reskinned version of the forest temple, because. Believe me, this is one of my favorite dungeons, 
and we will you'll know why if you very soon but by very soon I of course mean we will wait until next time yep. Let's see. because we are running very close well we're running low on time will you quit so I will just go claim this chest and then we will go and call it a well actually can we even get to that chest I think so oh crap 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 crap, crap. well we at least made it And we get the map! So yes, yeah, central room. Pretty helpful. As the map, as a piece of art. Link, link, link. So, with the first of the four Poes defeated, we're gonna go ahead and call it a day here. So, next time on Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess HD. We are going to continue exploring the Arbiter's Grounds. We've got one of the lights returned to the pedestal, but we still need to find the other three. And unfortunately, they are scattered throughout the entirety of the dungeon. So we've got quite a bit of exploring to do, but we will go and explore it next time. So until then, everyone, take care. <laughs>